Oh, oh no, we like cream. Oh, that's all right. Tea. Uh, Hang on. Jam first. Right, jam jam no. first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on now, this is serious no. talk. Come closer, boys. I need to know what you reckon. Jam first. Jam first. Cream second. It's cream first. Jam second. See, oh, this is a different. big debate. Twisting by the pool, everybody's twisting by the pool. Okay, I'm not twisting by the pool, I'm stood by the pool. I'm on holiday in Devon, um, and we're very lucky. We booked this a while ago. We're staying in a little annex to this lovely little cottage here, um, and it's got an outdoor pool that the boys have been really enjoying during the hot weather. It's cooled down a bit now, but um, it's still lovely. Look at the view behind me, and we can see that. There's the cross to the fields there, and there's Ladron Bay is just down there. If you want to look up on the map, we're in, we're in a village called Otterton. Um, Monk's Thatched Cottage, you can look that up. And we're very lucky to stay in such a lovely place. Uh, and it's actually been really good to get away from the farm and relax, you know, because while I'm at the farm, I can't help but think about stuff. So it's been a good downtime here. Um, and also, while I'm here, I'm doing a couple of videos. So I've done the. Um, I've done the, uh, I forgot what it's called, the milk station. And today I'm heading off a bit further, about, um, it's about 40 miles from here actually. I'm going down to see Hey Team TV. Now Hey Team TV are uh, other than a lot of YouTubers, Justin and Adam. Um, I think Adam's taken a step back from YouTubing, but Justin's still doing it. Now they run a farm where they um, basically produce forage, which they sell on. So, um, and they're a good got a couple of guys. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna see both of them, whether I'm just seeing Justin, but um, hardworking guys, good sense of humor. Uh, and I thought it was an opportunity for me to uh, go and see them, have a chat about things, how, you know, another aspect of farming. So hopefully I'll see some, uh, nice machinery and um have a look at uh what they're up to really and you know find out how they're doing in this dry weather because you know it can't be easy producing forage to sell if, if the grass isn't growing can it so i'm heading down there now um i'm just going to jump in my wife's car because we always use my wife's car because my dad car <laughs> smells of cow muck and and doesn't go very well um so luckily she's letting me drive it <laughs> i hope we don't crash it um so we're heading on down to them. I can't remember where it is. It's on the way down to um, Plymouth, I think. Uh, not far from Plymouth. So we're going to head down there. I say we, come with me. I say we, me, I'm going on my own. You're coming with me. Let's crack on. We'll go and see Hey Team TV. Well, I'm just about to head off now. Uh, funny thing is I've just had a conversation with my brother actually about what we're going to do for forage for this year because uh, we're actually looking to buy some round bales in now we're feeding the cows uh, silage my brother's phoned up and said he started feeding the cows silage now um, it'd be interesting to see the take on it Hey Team TV have got on on this because it is going to be a dire situation for going through into winter time if we're feeding silage now uh, we're going to need a lot of bales brought in for even if not now for later in the year and I'm sure they're probably selling silage now down at Hay Team. Right, let's crack on. I think we've got about 44 miles to go or something. See you in a bit. I think this is it. Hay Team TV. Here we are. This is their farm. Right, that's just the, that's just be up. There's two videos going on here. One, this is going to get confusing, I think. So Justin's filming here. Look, I'm filming him, filming you, filming me. Look at there we go. Look at all those different different angles. Which camera makes this look more beautiful, that one or this one? I don't know. Probably yours. And you're here. Adam's here. Right, so. As I said, I am at Hey Team TV. What I've really come, we well, talk to yeah, you. Yeah, talk to me. He's, he's, just, he's been arrogant. He's, he's over there. Just chat. he thinks it's the mirror. <laughs> so I'm at um, Hey Team TV. 
I've got Adam here. And really, I've just come down because I've enjoyed watching your videos. And I've just come down to have a look at what you do because you're not far from where I'm staying. No. So let me, let me get this right. So you two started here. He's coming over in a minute. Look, let me just have a look. Sorry. <laughs> oh, do, you want to, do you want to look at my stand? I just want to look at your stand. Look at this. Who does the welding round here? That, that's definitely that's, not. That, that's, that's definitely, definitely not, not HRF. I thought my welding was bad. Uh, I'm <laughs> quite pleased at seeing it's, someone it's else sticks. who does farmer welding. This is what well, they call it pigeon poo, don't they? Yeah, but it works. It works. It's that's solid. what I say to everyone it's on YouTube. Solid. I say, as long as it works, it doesn't really matter what it looks <laughs> like, does it? So you made this. This is a magnetic base. Oh, magnetic camera mount and is that flexy or is that just oh no you've well, already just bent it it's just a bit of bolt but it is flexible enough that you can move it on that is good i like that but the thing is just if that snaps you just put another off, one on weld another one on fair play so you sticking that on while i talk to adam so, yeah i'm gonna stick this on all right three days later yeah one and, moment later yeah <laughs> <laughs> one waffer thin yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've only just really arrived and, and uh I'm straight in it. I've grabbed you off of quite a busy time, haven't you? Because you've been um, flat out, I think, doing straw and hay and everything yep. like that. But let's let's rewind right to the beginning. So, Hey Team TV, you guys, how long ago did you start? Let's not talk about the YouTube just yet. How long did you actually start doing selling hay and straw and stuff? And how did you end up doing that? So that started about now 12, about 12 to 15 years ago, somewhere in that. It's been a long time. Um, then basically it was a happy accident we were contractors at the time and mm. we also did things like rugby pitches and stuff like that and we produced haylage for basically our calves but contracting we would go out and contract make haylage for people's horses but as I don't know anyone watching this knows a lot of people can't deal with the pressure of basically producing hay and haylage and working with weather and basically the lap of the gods of what it may, is. It may it happen. totally like that, especially with hay, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. so so catch lot, it wrong, you rubbish. Yeah. So a lot of our customers would get stressed about it and they would push to bale early and then end up with products that were too wet. Right. And then they ended up finding that they preferred our products that we were making for our own calves and that turned into like a bit of a happy accident that snowballed out of control. So then we started selling our own bales with being four foots, which there's a little stack over there. Well, I'll look at that in a minute. You've got them all nicely stacked up there. Yeah. So then we started selling lots of four foots mm. round bales to local places. Then we ended up going to more and more local horse yards and then more and more local horse yards and basically took over the market in the area to which point then we started having people catch us up mm. and also starting to copy and do what we mm. do as well. So then we diversified again and we went to the small bales, which you can see over palletized. Yeah. Oh yeah, ready to go. And now we deliver to horse yards, small bales. Um, we have people come pick up loads of small bales, but it's a totally different niche. Mm. We have a lot of pet people come pick up bales. And it just snowballed like that and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we got to the point that we changed to that. And then when we changed to the small bales, which we did about seven, eight years ago, we started doing 10 to 20,000 small bales a year. Now we've jumped, we're doing about 250. Oh my God, that's phenomenal. 300,000 small bales that's a year. That's unbelievable. And it's still growing. So. And you created this market, haven't you? Or oh, the market was there, but you've created a business off, off of that right from the start. Yeah. So that's from ground up. You've got to be proud of yourselves, lads, for doing that, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you definitely. Know? Yeah, very you, lucky. You know, but that's not, do you know what? People can see it on the outside and think, oh yeah, they got it easy, they're big. But you didn't start like that. You had to create this business, didn't you? No, yeah. if you go back to the kit that we started with, which was, you're talking an MF390, yeah. Case 856, right. 956. Nothing flash then, really. No, like you, you go back to where things started mm. and it was a totally different, like, beast to it is now. Right. And it's one of those things that, it's a long-term game. Yeah. A lot of people want to see big changes in a short period of time, which is just, okay, if you win the lottery, well done. Yeah. But this is a long-term game. So first, when I came home, me and my father put together a six to 10 year plan, which we completed a few years ago. And now we're in another six to 10 year plan of where we go in the next six yeah. to 10 years. So it's that long game. 
and yeah we've got big shiny gear now but it didn't start like but that it start, you got i mean when you get to the level you're at as well you it's no good you relying on 20 year old tractors like me is it yeah. because you're using them all the time yeah. time is money you don't want to break down in the middle of a field no. when there's rain due is there no. so i mean hence you know and also as i said to someone before um so if you regularly change your machinery, there's not a massive financial implication every time you change it, is there? Not like me trying to change a 20-year-old tractor to a brand new. So it's a, it's a sensible business decision to regularly change once you're in that cycle, really, yeah. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, the, the problem, if it does break down, is someone else's problem, not yeah. us. And that takes the pain away from it, doesn't yeah, it? I wouldn't mind being like that. Our dealers as well, mm. is a, a vehicle will come down in yeah. that place if it does get break down so yeah. we're covered in all avenues yeah so let's have a look at some shiny stuff then because this this is a beast didn't it i wish harry was here actually <laughs> so how long have you had this fast track then this is a few months old is it yeah these these were oh, new this oh wow year. look at that that is so what made you get a big fast track rather than a big tractor say so it is a multi-purpose tool basically mm. so we looked at the idea of going in lorries mm. for the whole the, the distance political. It's yeah, way too political for us. And what well, lorries are? Yeah, are they? I don't know anything. We have to be on the road seven days a week, right? For us, and mm. then you've got six weekly check. And oh, I see. Operator's license, just, movement license. It wouldn't work, just, right? Because they're not. It wouldn't be at the lorry. Wouldn't be out every day. Mm. Yeah. So just be sat around. These yeah. can do farm work and deliveries right. at the yeah. yards at More the same use, time. Yeah. And some of the yards that we go into, you wouldn't be able to get down with the lorry. Right. You know the tracks yeah. are crap yeah. or it's muddy and or they want it up on a field. It's lorry spec. Mm. It does 40 mile an hour. Does 40 mile yeah. an hour, quacky. What's that like doing driving 40 mile an hour in this? It's all right now, but when you first, you first it. do it, it it's a bit In these Devon bit lanes scary, as yeah. well, you're not doing 40 in well, a lot of those. The lanes coming down to it, I but, know, yeah. they're narrow, aren't they? Yes, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, it's a different world down here. Yeah. It is. If you want to reverse that up a Devon lane, you've got to have some skill there, haven't you? You have, but yeah. most of the time we just try to drive over what's ever. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> it's, get out of my way, I'm coming yeah, through, I'm isn't it? No, it? No matter what. You know, and if you've got a mini metro or something, you're straight over the top of it. <laughs> yeah, so, some people some people say we're aggressive when we drive down it. It's not, it's just it's survival of the fittest. It's, it's just that if you see that big yellow bonnet coming towards the little car, you, you're going <laughs> to you're gonna reverse back, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a quick look, because a lot of people don't see a fast track you won't see a fast track on my farm i'm afraid but this is a beast isn't it cool just climbing up inside it i'm getting a headache just thinking about going up to that step <laughs> i mean it's quite there isn't i'm surprised maybe it's, we're parked yeah, on an angle aren't we because otherwise that, that's quite a that's quite a climb isn't it jcb yeah. up there can i get up yeah, and have a look i'll see if i can get up Oh, there's, a, there's a pig's ear on the seat is that your <laughs> is that one of your that's snacks yeah, adam that's my lunch is it? <laughs> look oh yeah whack. look at this Woo. i'm scared to touch anything but it is oh you got coon on the back of it wow look at all this most important you've got a coke can holder in there yeah, that's the most get... important thing yeah well visibility is beautiful isn't it yeah it's totally different and you can, it's actually a proper seat here yeah. isn't it not a fold down no, little it's actually a proper, proper proper seat you know like a car seat yeah. isn't it i can see you're kitted out for your youtube and you've got your mics here and stuff yeah. Wow, I, I love the space around it. Do you know, it reminds me a little bit of going in the Forager when the... It's a bit like a combine cab, isn't it? Yeah, I sort it's of feel like that, more glass and the space around here. But it's a big cab, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But when you're driving anyway, you must it's, feel good it, in this. It is luxury. It is yeah, really cool. lovely. to have this sort of lovely. thing on the farm. Well, it makes your life better. And like you said, you can justify on what you're doing, can't you? Yeah, it is, you know, like a lorry. It's, it's not... all about the right kit for the right place, isn't it? And that, yeah. that's the thing to understand, isn't it? And on a farm like this, you need to have this stuff like that. If I had this on my farm, it would sit in the shed most of the it's time like, and not it, do anything. This tractor has got to be used. It would have, I tell you what, if this tractor was in our farm, it'd have a massive sticker saying roof on it. <laughs> <laughs> because it wouldn't fit under our roofs and it would and that's why our mccorn it's got a sticker like that because i took the top of the tractor off and going hit the rsj once <laughs> so we got a sticker that says roof and everyone keeps asking me what the roof sticker is is to remind me not to be a dump numpty and smack the roof on it because this is high isn't it yeah, yeah. proper high isn't it yeah. right i better get out of this before i get envy and uh, what i order one when i get home and don't forget your fridge as well underneath oh you got a fridge yes. yeah oh my god well, I bet that's full of Cornish pasties normally, isn't it? Yeah, they've gone now. Right? Yeah. That would be my Cornish pasty stash. Yeah, we've, we've broken down here. Both of us don't like pasties. Oh, you are joking. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, I don't like pasties. You'll be telling me next <laughs> you don't like a Devon oh. cream tea as well. Oh, no, we like cream tea. Oh, that's all right. Tea. Hang on. Jam first. Right, jam jam no. first. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on now, this is serious no. talk. Come closer, boys. I need to know what... You reckon jam first? Jam first, cream second. 
It's cream first, jam second. See, oh, this is a different. big debate. I would go. Mm, if jam, I said the I'd fast track, yeah. why? Why would you go jam first? I don't know. That's I like. I put a lot of cream See, on mine afterwards. Butter, it's, isn't it? See, I, you use it. As I an think if butter. you put the cream down first, when you put the jam in, it would all smear in. The, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, but jam, jam first, cream second. It's like bad boy scone, isn't it? No, yeah, it's, uh, definitely. It's just, it's just. <laughs> don't, even, don't even get me started on this. Oh, we could be here all day. We're at stress levels now, debating this, and it is one of the critical things in life to know whether <laughs> jam first, cream first. Comment below what you think. Who thinks right? All right. Anyway, let's get out of here. We we done the d debate. That's a good one. <laughs> what? Oh, hang on. I don't worry about that. I'm, I'm quite tempted with the snack though. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's shut. Right, where to now? Let's have a quick look at the. We, we're going to have a look in the shed in a minute, but we'll have a look at the uh, the bales then. So these are big, big ones, aren't they? Yeah. They're yeah. bigger than what we'd get on our yeah. farm. I think what I think ours are probably four foot. Would they be? I, I'm not really. I don't really think yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potential yeah. one to four foot. So where are we heading round here then? So we got. Taking here, I think, we're taking. We're like on a little <laughs> maze round here. Is he deliberately trying to wear me out by going round and round? We park everything everywhere. Yeah. So there's a oh, these are big bales, aren't they? You see the comparison. Wow, that's. I mean, so that's the standard. That's yeah, what we yeah, normally have. Up, yeah. These are massive, aren't they? What? What is, is that? Six foot? Or yeah, that's six foot. Looks bigger. So that's six point five. Wow. So they. Effectively, there's three of those yeah. in one of those. There's three of those in one yeah. of those. Bloody hell. So, I mean, what are you lifting that with then? Manitou or something? Yeah, tell me on Yeah, my little old McCormick wouldn't even pick one of those up, I reckon. It would struggle. I mean, it would... but these are, these are well um, filled, aren't they? Yeah. You've got these good and solid. You, yeah. Let's face it, if you don't, guys don't do it right, no one will. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, try, yeah. some of our bales, not being funny, our contractor makes them, sometimes they can be a bit squidgy and stuff. Yeah. But these are, well, I mean, that's why they can stack really well, isn't it? There's no movement in the bales. It's also, but it's also bailed with a belt baler. Right. Oh, does that make a difference, is it? Yeah. Because yeah. um, they use a McHale. I don't really know enough yeah, about those. Yeah, we've got, we've got onto right. the baler in a minute. Um, right. That's what we're using. So, so belt baler, if you've got a fixed chamber, you end up you can have a soft center right with a, a belt baler it starts from the core right so it's solid okay. all, all the way through right you can have a setting and leave yeah. a bit in the middle right and it'll and it'll start the bale later and you'll have a soft core okay so if you're making something like hay and your hay isn't perfectly fit you can leave a soft core and your hay will breathe better right yeah because that's important with hay and if it yeah. starts sweating you're really but stuffed for us we want to get as much, much grass as that bale. Grass yeah, into a bale. Yeah. Bigger bale, less bales yeah. in the field. Well, less to stack as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you can get them is, compact, because yeah. otherwise your stack's flipping twice as high, aren't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. So you start, let me let me think about this. If you start, when would you start baling? April, May time? No. Are you doing all bales? Well, yeah, we're all bales, yeah. So you're starting late in May. late May. Yeah. So that'd be your first cut. And then yeah. you would be going through, right through till... September, oh, September. September. Sometimes uh, we get into October. And then, would you so would you sell much nor, normally during the summer, or is it all stored and then sold through the winter? No, we're in a very unusual year, yeah. so we are yeah. selling. This is like winter, isn't it? Yeah, really? we're yeah. selling. We've been in winter sales now for right. nearly nine months. Really? Because it's just short of cropage everywhere. Well, we, do you know? Funny enough, I just spoke to my brother today, and my brother's ringing around trying to buy silage bales now. Right. Because we're we're feeding to the dairy cows hay, or sorry, silage. We haven't opened our main clamp. We're just feeding round bales in a ring feeder. We never normally do that, yeah. and it's quite a worrying time. Now we've got enough bales stacked in our yard at the moment to feed them, but we haven't got enough to see us through in March. Yeah. You know, and so we're thinking about trying to get some now because if we start looking for them in March, there ain't going to be any out there. No. And you've got people buying from you now that are feeding now. We've I take got it. people buying from us now. We've got a fair stocking already. Yeah. With rain that we've had, which thankfully you brought oh, yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> I bought you some beers as well. Yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. don't forget that. A bit of beaver bit, beer. Bit of beaver, beaver beer. beer. <laughs> You'll be enjoying that later. Yeah. I, I bought us some uh, beers from where I'm staying, and I thought and found an interesting one. But that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, sorry. So for the moisture that we've got now. Yeah. We're really lucky because we don't overly graze. Yeah. Um, might take you up through a few of the fields in a minute. 
we haven't burnt off quite right. like, you know any that's the difference in it. this is the problem i got with the bloody cows is the fact that they've grazed it down pretty tight and yeah. then it's going to take a long time to recover but then i'm i haven't got any choice really there's no grass anywhere no. and and also you know what it's like you keep thinking it'll rain next week yeah it'll be all right yeah it'll be all right i've been thinking that since july <laughs> but it hasn't happened it happened what's going on yeah it's for, for us obviously we don't have the stock problem yeah we've only got 20 20 head of cattle there's only 12 mm. going out to graze mm. they're on restricted grazing anyway we're also back fenced as well so the grass has got loads of loads of recovery but everything else like you from like from here i don't know if you can see on camera we've got green tinge everywhere right it's not dead white. yeah you yours yeah. is greener here than it is for me at home yeah so with, this, right, with this rain now with the heat that is mm. in the soil we should or fingers crossed hopefully have a big pickup yeah of moisture it does actually i remember this from 2018 it, the grass did come back quite quickly once we got enough moisture in it yeah and you sort of have almost like a spring flush late in the autumn yeah. perhaps yeah. so you would hope to get some more round bales and stuff would yeah, you so hopefully yeah. we'll go for another cut we've yeah. got some water meadows yeah. which no joke they're luscious green about that mm. long but they just always lie wet right it's just the oh, that's handy, the isn't it? Lies. we so, have got a second cut ready now a few right. fields haven't we yeah a couple go. couple so uh, without going too into prices because that's your financial business but is the is the price of round bales and stuff up now from say last year partly i guess because of the price of wrap and everything like that and diesel everything's you, up yeah you know, yeah you see on Facebook Marketplace and all that, yeah. farmers, I really don't see the point where they got round bales going for £15. No, they can't make any money there at all. Oh, can you make any money this year? No. You, you can't do it. It's going to cost It costs you more to make it. Yeah. It. Yeah. That's if, right. If, if anyone watching is in ag and sees any bales at £15. Yeah, bale, have a, buy them for me. <laughs> buy them for me. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen £2 bales of hay and straw. Yeah. That's crazy. Buy them. Just yeah. buy them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because that is not a honest no to the situation well, they, the world, the, what econ no. economics is going at the moment if you put any fertilizer on that as well or it's anything like that it's just money. nothing is there no, no. in no. fact i'm still thinking in some ways it is cheaper still to buy them in even if they're reasonably expensive compared with the cost of fertilizer and everything now and the labor yeah. and the diesel they, the world's gone mad hasn't it really it, it is it has gone nuts and um, we didn't really need a drake to actually make it even worse uh, yeah. did we you know it, with yeah with the drought with the drought on top of everything already so yeah. obviously food prices this year i don't know what anyone thinks of this my opinion of this is it, things are, could go through the roof mm. because fertilizer's gone through the roof fuel's gone through the roof now we're in a drought so there's less of everything I know. um we've heard a lot from our hauliers that a lot of the straw boys have been shredding straw what rather than rather than baling what? it because it's not worth no the price yeah. of fertilizer oh right they're putting straw yeah. back in the ground i see what you mean it. yeah of course yeah so understandably so that, that if there's and that's not good news for people like me who want to buy straw buy straw no, especially if you know market short those those for bedding or even to chuck in the feeder mm. wagon to bulk out rations if it's not if it's not there. i mean the only positive is it makes you more inventive doesn't it and you start yeah. thinking what can you do to use other stuff find other ways of doing things yeah you know get a job at tesco's <laughs> <laughs> um, mcdonald's, they McDonald's. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and you probably get a free burger meal when you finish yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't it, eh? that's yeah. not bad right lead on boys i think we've got a few more bits to see i won't hold you up all day that's right. i gotta ask you right while we're walking down so how long ago did you start YouTubing on this? Because you, you, you've been farming a lot longer than you've been YouTubing, haven't you? So we started about three years ago. Three right. Years, January, actually, first of what, January. Was it? Yeah. So what, what was the inspiration to start doing a YouTube channel then? It he, wasn't. He <laughs> bet. It wasn't? <laughs> no, I bet him that we wouldn't do it. Really? Yeah, over the table, yeah. Is yeah. that right? That was, yeah, yeah, that's how we did it, yeah. Well, you just said, I bet you wouldn't start. Yeah, and I'll so be. you thought, oh, so, you know, I'm so going to go back. So basically, we watched a YouTube video. Yeah. We watched a YouTube video, and I said, oh, for goodness sake. I could do that. Really? And then he went, I bet he couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he still can't, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's still, str <laughs> he's still struggling. He's still, <laughs> still struggling. Yeah. So, so, and how many videos later is that? Probably 300 yeah, or Yeah, it's coming up to 300, I think. I'll have to go back. I'm going to go back and look at that first video, I think. I won't have a it's look terrible. at it. It's terrible. It's awful. It's awful. Well, that's all right, though, isn't it? You the, got first, the first video was my, f my first go at it, and the second one was his first go at it. it. Was it? Yeah. And it was awkward, cringeworthy, um, cringe -worthy. Was it? <laughs> yeah. couldn't string a sentence together, very robotic. You see a camera, it's like 
pure fear. Really? Now, is it? Now it's like. Now it's just second nature, isn't it? Yeah. I, I just hold this thing up and chat to it, and I feel like I'm just talking to someone. Yeah. And there's no one there. Does that mean, does that mean we're all a bit weird? Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> well, welcome to the Weird Club. This is YouTubers together. We don't do that very often. We are. It is a bit weird, actually, this whole YouTube phenomenon, isn't it? Because yeah. yeah, I've is. come down here because I watch you on YouTube. Otherwise, I wouldn't be down here. No. How weird is that? You wouldn't know, would you? No, and I've seen that two blokes don't really know, but I feel like I know you. Yeah. But it's a good little club, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's a nice club, in. isn't it? <laughs> now, next question, right? And I love this logo, right? I've got to ask you about this. Who came up with the Hey Team TV logo? This is just Hey Team, but I call well, you Hey Team obviously TV. Obviously, it's a rip off the Hey Team. Now, I didn't notice that. <laughs> now, this is this is the truth, right? And I've just been talking off camera before we I was filming this. I didn't even realise it's a rip off of the A Team until I watched the A Team and thought, bloody hell, they've ripped off the Hey Team. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the machine gun bullets across the A, isn't yeah. it? So who came up with that? Because that is a really good logo. So, over the years, for a lot people but... shot at you. <laughs> yeah, people shot at me. They just yeah, saw this grid. So, no, like... sorry, back to really what, what. So, over the mm. last few years of doing this before mm. YouTube, every year I would sort of try and come up with a clever hey joke t shirt. Right. Oh, so you're already doing a t shirt before? Yeah, we, we, yeah. we had yeah. t shirts, so mm. we would do like, like work t shirts and we do designs on them yeah. and stuff like that. It was just sort of like it's an icebreaker when we turn up to mm. a horse yard and people yeah. sort of have a bit of a laugh. Right. Um, so before this one, we had Fifty Shades of Hay. Oh, right, okay, very good. Uh, in a horse yard, I bet you like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a horsey girl. That one went down considerably I, well. Yeah. I bet it did. Um, then there was like, you know, making hay when the sun shines. Right. It was just like hay yeah. pay t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. And we came up with this the year before starting YouTube. Right. And we decided... You thought that's a good one. Stick with that. Kill. The dogs have gone nuts over something. Or not. There's nothing even there. Wolfie! Random person. Yeah. Probably random hiker or something. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that was the one that stuck. I, I love it. I really do. So, yeah. So, we agreed that so that's what we call it. And, hmm. that's, and the rest is history. And the rest is history. What was the other option? The, the pirate farmers, I think. Was, was it? Too. Like I said, we got the Devon Warris. <laughs> yeah. you, you're gonna, if you do the pirate farmers, you'd be arguing over cream teas all the time, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah we can't do that. Can't do that. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I like that logo. Okay. So, 18 yeah, that's TV. How, that's how it came about. Brilliant. So anyway, oh, look at this shine, more shininess. T7. So what make, what influences your choice in getting a New Holland rather than, say, a Massey Ferguson? Or is it because that's a dealer nearby? Because it generally dealer, things, really, isn't it? dealers yeah. make a big difference, don't they? Dealer nearby, mm. always, ran, always ran New Hollands. Yeah. And to be quite honest, it's the cheapest out of all of them. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So it's the best deal for you guys? Yeah. Was it really? At the end of the wow. day, it what? doesn't matter, it's blue or... No. Paint. At the end of the day, that mean. tractor will do the same yes, job as John Deere. Absolutely right. Ferguson, absolutely whatever. right. That's, that's, you know, that's... A lot of people seem to forget that, don't yeah, they? They do exactly if the same we, job. If we didn't need to deliver yeah. the amount of stuff that we need to deliver, yeah. they wouldn't be it. No. Right. So the fast tracks just wouldn't be it. Yeah. Um, before the fast well, tracks. They'll pull anything, won't they? Yeah, yeah. before the fast tracks, we were all New Holland. Yeah. Mm. Um, we've tried other stuff, but at the end of the day, are we. Are we die-hard New Holland fans? Not really. If someone came up with a better deal. So where's the nearest dealer for you for that then? Is that is uh, fairly local? Six miles from Oh, that's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that amounts to a lot, doesn't it? Because yeah. for me, the Massey Ferguson dealership's the nearest for me. And again, it's probably about six miles away. Yeah. And yeah. as soon as you you know that backups down the road, that makes a hell of a difference, yeah. doesn't yeah, it? Of course it yeah. is, yeah. You know? And they're, they're, all, they're all really good to us. And it doesn't, yeah. it, again, it doesn't matter what tractors you got, it comes down to the backup and the dealership. Yeah, if the, it does, you know, massive. If, if your John Deere's rubbish, you're New Orleans rubbish. Yeah. If your de dealer's rubbish as well, yeah. the whole package is rubbish. Oh yeah, totally. It's like you love your diehard Fent fans and your John Deere yeah. fans, but the thing is, if a Fent and John Deere go wrong, it's it's a lot of a lot of cash. Mm. And usually New Orleans cases they're simple. No, well, they're partly it's readily available and everything, aren't they? They're simple, but they're, yeah. they're simple tractors. They're cheaper tractors. Yeah. 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 At the end of the day, they all pull a bailer, they all pull a trailer, and they, they do all work on the day. Yeah. And it fits under the roof. You haven't got a sticker saying roof. 
Oh, I love a workshop like this. This is this makes me feel at home. This is a carnage workshop. The thing is, though, I bet it's just like our workshop. You know where everything you need is. Yeah. You know, it's that's all, it's all on the floor. That's how, it, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works in a farm, though, isn't it? I mean, so you look at that, and everyone else will go, geez, what's that? And I bet if I said to you, go and get blah, 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 you went over there and picked it out straight away because yeah. you just know where everything is, don't you? Well, long, long term plan is we would like a proper machinery shed yeah. over the, where there's a rusty mm, barn over there right. and put in a proper workshop bay yeah. and then this would just be turned into uh, like a machine machinery store. yeah but you got you got to go one step at a time yeah. you, you yeah, know you because you know by the time you put a shed up and a flipping concrete floor and everything yeah you're look, talking a lot of money aren't you yeah, yeah at you the know? moment that money could go on something else i know it's always the way, you know, the, world, the way the world is it's yeah do you invest in stuff i know at the i know no one knows what's happening do they no I mean, you just keep your business going. So there's a McHale, that's slightly different than the one we've got. Well, I say one we got, when we, our contractor uses. So that one, would that just, does that wrap it as no, well? This is just, that a, just purely a variable, bail it, yeah. right. A variable belt. Yeah, and then you go behind with a wrapper, which is what most people do, isn't it? Yeah, you can convert this one that you can put a plastic film yeah. over the bale rather than that. But we don't, because we make a lot of hay and a lot of hay. Right. Well, we've not really looked, perfectly looked into the conversion kit. Yeah. Well, that's enough to cart around, isn't it? Especially yeah. in these little lanes around yeah, she's Devon, big, isn't she's it? She's a big bailer. You know, I mean, at the McHale they've got that does the wrapping. I'm looking at your Devon lanes and thinking, I wouldn't want to drive that down round here. <laughs> you know, that's that's enough to get through, isn't it? Yeah. You know? All the kit we've got here, it's all tough to get through. Well, that, you've got to be careful. You, to get that down the Devon lanes, I just drove down to your farm. It's pretty narrow, isn't yeah. it? That must be when you get there, you're open. You're not going to meet anyone else, aren't you? Yeah. You, well. If you do, they're open. They're not going to meet you. They're open. They're not meeting you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, really, yeah, aren't you just, they? You That's really on. what yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. isn't it? We, we haven't got we haven't got time to wait wait for people to get there. No. We just keep driving. Go <laughs> over the top. Did you yeah. see that car? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that pile of scrap metal on the floor? Yes. Yeah. Behind you. <laughs> That's what it is. Brilliant. So that's the bailer. I think we will finish up. We're going to look at your shed at the top where you have yeah. got a load of stuff. That's where you. I haven't got a lot of time. Where just where the magic happens. So you, so I mean, I've been here, and there was people coming and going all the time, really, weren't there? You got people coming and buying now, yep. like you said, but you've got your stores here, and this is where you process it. Then is it into yep. different things for different people? So at the moment, our store is not quite like it usually is. Yeah, we've got bales stored outside. It's not ideal, but we didn't want to wrap lots of hay with plastic. Right. So no, because that's an extra cost, isn't it? So this shed here. It's partly full of big bale hay. Right. Oh, and fair then, play. There's a fair stack in there, isn't there? It's a bigger shed than I thought. Yeah. Going back. So both of these, both of these sheds. Obviously, this isn't. This is our old sheep. Um, right. Building. Works well though, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's not as high as the other one next door, but we've made it work for as we've got to make it work so it? who puts so. these bales in here because that's quite precision stacking isn't it i'd be worried about hitting the roof or something no, justin don't worry about stuff like that isn't it no. is he making new air vents every now and then yeah there's one. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah there is a big hole in the roof is that recent it, yeah in fairness that one actually wasn't me that was we had a big, that was that, one, we, we someone had, else there, yeah. no we had a big thunderstorm and right. blew three panels off oh okay the um, bolts got loose then, did they? But yeah, I have. I have had see, a few my only trouble is with asbestos; it doesn't bend, does it? No. The concrete sheets. This one minute it's there, and the next it's yeah. oh. I hate I that noise of breaking. I would rather tin roofs. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, the roof we're putting on, hopefully on this yard. I said to the bloke, he said, "Do you want um, concrete sheets?" And I said, "I'll put tin on it." Because I'm thinking, I know I'm going to put the loader up there sooner or later, and I'll end up going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're putting a tin roof over it, rightly or wrongly, I don't know. But there's your pallets of hay, and then you've got that's already processed down the back of there. Do you yeah. is it colour coded? No, Black, or is it just what cheap wrap you can get? It's just whatever's cheap at the time. Is it? Yeah, I don't know much about buying wrap. Is there a difference in qualities and price significantly? Yeah, so something like them, <clears throat> which is it's just pallet wrapping, yeah, the outside. That's a 500 film, which we'll just pick up whatever cheap. What do you mean by 500 film? Is that 500 mil? So 500 be, mil. That's just the depth oh, of, of the a roll. plastic sheet. Okay. Um, the small bales get wrapped with 360. Yeah. And then we obviously we wrap the big bales with 750, mm. which is over here. Yeah. And there's another pallet of it over there. But we're really, really lucky with wrap that we bought yeah. a lorry load three, four years ago. Yeah. 
A literal lorry load. A literal Because you're going to know you're going to use it, aren't you? Yeah, well, we didn't mean to. It just sort of, it just seemed a good <laughs> you idea. You accidentally yeah, bought a lorry we're load of plastic. That, we? We're still, oh, yeah. we're still yeah. using so it. So that's now. a good investment, bearing in mind that where all the plastic prices have Plas gone. Plastic prices at the moment are up 20 to 30%. Cool, you'll be gutted when that runs out then, aren't you? You're going to buy a load more. Is, yeah, it would be horrendous. But it... It's one of those happy accidents. Yeah, they happen. Yeah. But sometimes it, it's, it does, isn't it? It's, it's one one of, one of those things that sometimes things are offered to you. It's better to say yes yeah. and scratch your head how you can figure it out than you know go. You'll oh, find I a can't, way. I can't, I can't justify it. Mm. And I know. At that one, we said yes at the right time, and it's it's worked out. You know, it could have gone the other way, and plastic prices dropped, and then we would look stupid. So but you just, I mean, we've done the same. We forward bought feed for our cows for the winter. We don't know where it's going, but you know, we felt for security point of view from the farm, we knew what our costs were. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to do that, haven't you? Yeah. You knew when you bought that wrap, that's your cost, fixed cost for whatever yeah, how long. You haven't got to worry about that for a few no. years then. That's, that's you that. know, and that's all right, isn't it, yeah. really? So, next door then, I, we haven't got a lot of time, so we won't spend much time in here, but um, next door, this is where you do most of your processing. So, you, again, you've got it stacked up there. Ooh. I'm just going to set this up. Are we going to get, get a bit of me filming you, you filming me? Oh, no, no, I, was, I will do that in a minute. Oh, he just wants more video of himself. <laughs> yeah, he just loves looking at himself, doesn't he? <laughs> he always looks like you're looking in the mirror, doesn't it? That's what he's doing. Yeah. So you've got barley straw in it. Is it barley straw? Yeah. yeah. Sound yeah, like a townie. Got... Is, it... <laughs> <laughs> Is it barley straw? That hay there? Yeah. <laughs> so you've got barley. What's that big bale? Is that wheat or barley at the back? Uh... The round bales are hay. hay. Mm. Oh, hay, right. right the okay. round bales are all hay. Of course, yeah. This is barley. Mm. We don't grow any corn. Yeah. We buy all so you just buy that off the field, do you? Yeah, we just buy all the straw. Do you go to an auction and buy that, or do you just no, have just, a deal with a farmer? Just just deal yeah. off, off. It's down a bit this year, isn't it, um, straw? At the moment, yes. It won't be for long. Because you're putting your prices <laughs> up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we've got your supply and demand, isn't it? Yeah, we could yeah. probably really do with... We're processing like mad at the moment. Right to try and get barn space because the barns are literally well that's the premium isn't it with full. anything like that you've got to have somewhere to put it haven't you <clears throat> yeah so we've got this barn which should be actually pallets right. stacked all the way in the back yeah it's full of big bales obviously the shed next door is half filled with big bales but we've had to use half of it for small work or the small pallets and then we've got another four four sheds right on other farms wow all full of hay oh my goodness just and you'll rammed. be processing that through the winter and everything, selling it on. And Basically, 364 days of the year. You're working, selling. We're, we're processing and making small whales. Well, nothing stops eating, does it? No, no. So you're going to be busy... Uh, and you and you basically would have enough in store to see you right through to next uh, July, would you? <laughs> it's a bit, dropped. you're winging it, aren't you? A bit you on everything with farming. You just no never... There's grass around, is no. there? So you don't know. We're, yeah. we're lucky in the last few years we've always built up a surplus yeah so we're still selling last year's hay right we're still selling last year's haylage yeah at the moment and that will go on for a little while but last year we were slightly down on how much we produced and this year at the moment we are slightly behind on what we usually produce right because of weather conditions so we don't know how it will quite pan out but we'd still do have like a, we always carry that yeah. carryover yeah but we we really need next year on mm. forward thinking that we need to get a, a a bigger volume produced yeah to start building up that surplus again right that like little safety mm. net mm. because the idea is we just do not want someone to phone up and we'll say no it's yes, like on yes, our it's farm. kind of always the option. We always carry too much straw and hay. Yeah. I'd rather have too much yeah, and it rolls yeah, over yeah. to next year than blooming heck, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel yeah. to get some and it's flipping May or something, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're always like, oh, have I judged it right? I don't know, but it's better not to have judged it right and have too much, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you've I think. Got wet, wet spring or whatever. Oh. You, you know, well, I bet every yeah. farmer around here is spraying for a late autumn and an early spring, aren't they? Yeah. Because, because they're feeding what they shouldn't be feeding now, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Well, good for you guys, though, isn't it? But you know, it, it, it's great in one one aspect. Um, but yeah, at the same time, same time, it's also a bit of a killer. Even on the market, we got put on things that is also passed over to a customer, and everyone yeah. at the moment's hurting, aren't they? I know. And it's trying it's, to find the balance of everything. Well, you're hurting as well, though, because your yeah. your fuel bills must have gone up yeah. loads, haven't they? They've doubled. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, and that's... You know, we we what, talked about it off camera. Yeah. But all our fuel costs have ab literally doubled. Yeah. And you what know? can you do about that? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely so, nothing. You, know, you just got to have. So who, who's gonna, you know, subsidise yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Are, aren't we? Yeah, and the plastic, and like you said, you've got old plastic. To, you can use that, but that's gonna be gone, and you're into a shocker then, aren't you? Yeah. And everything else, you're, you know, the cost of living for yourselves. You've got to pay yourself a wage yeah. off this, and pay for going out and everything like yeah. that. I think this is the thing a lot of people don't understand. Farming generally subsidises other people, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. We subsidise the British public to a degree, don't we, yeah. in the supermarket. And things have changed rapidly this yeah. year in the fact that the public are suddenly realising what food it costs now, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've had to. Because we couldn't sustain a low food no. price any longer, could we? A no commodity the, price. What the British public will also really be hit by is if, and it could possibly happen, if the government pull the plug on British farming subsidies, I know. Do you know goes, what they've got? To, they've got to pull back on that because saying the single farm payment going to go, that's a big mistake. Because yeah. a year like this, bloody hell, you need it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and how can you just leave all these farms that are struggling? Yeah. And go, sorry, boom, they're going to go. Yeah. What we're going to end up with? We're going to end up with, you know, just a few big estates in every area because all yeah. the little guys. We're, and, and it knocks onto you guys because you start losing all these customers and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to someone the other day, actually, actually on um, uh, what was it on the radio? No, it was on the Farmers Guardian. I did an interview for them the other day, um, saying how a, a farm is like a spider's web. Yeah. And off that spider's web are all these little companies relying on the farmers, aren't they? Like, yeah, yeah. like the people who service that JCB or the, you know, the the uh, New it's Holland. A, it's a huge industry when you start branching out. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all supporting that. And if, if money's tight on this farm or our farm or anyone, that shrinks that money going out to the area. And then, you know, yeah. suddenly you've got redundancies at dealerships yeah. or anything like that. So, you know, you it's can't... It's a huge knock-on effect. Yeah. Massive. You can't take this money away from farms now. Not at this blooming moment. No. But they'll no. try, no doubt. Yeah. It's... We can't eat trees either, can we? If no. you start putting trees across, <laughs> you know, all this... We're going to put... Rewilding. Rewilding over, oh, yeah. you know, over flipping half of Devon. Because someone in London thinks that's great for a pension fund. Sorry, I'm getting a bit ranty here now. <laughs> See, re rewilding is great, but food security should be at a higher... That's right. Yeah. A higher sort of... It's got to be valued level. on the land, doesn't it? Where, yeah. you know, rewilding's fine if you've got really marginal land on, you know, some parts of a farm. But you can't just say that you can put it anywhere. Yeah. No. Putting over quality farmland, that is a big mistake. Yeah. It's like with, with, obviously, we're really going... We are getting. I didn't yeah. intend to this, yeah. <laughs> but but it's good though. If if we if we if we go into this like look at what's happening with Ukraine and the yeah. knock-on with that on food moving around, and you look at Germany getting their energy cut off by Russia. So everyone everyone's suddenly becoming trying to become energy efficient within their own countries, yeah. and we should be food efficient. That's so right. actually, in this country, we should actually be trying to figure out how to mass produce tomatoes over here and not bringing them in from the bottom of spain well, i know yeah you know moroccan tomatoes that's what we got in our <laughs> fridge at the moment i think it's 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 all these things it's like we should be trying to develop ways of doing it here yeah rather than sh putting it in a great big container in onto a ship move it miles and miles and miles to get it here and at some point that must have changed because when my mum and dad were young no one would have thought of having tomatoes from spain no no you know they would have thought you're crazy yeah or, to, or strawberries from somewhere like Morocco or something that you yeah. know they're in Tesco's all year round. The world's gone a bit bonkers, isn't it? Well, you New need New to pull Zealand it back. Lamb. Exactly. You know, how is that? I know. Really? Let's yeah. be I know. I know. So it's frozen to come over yeah. here, and then we freeze it again. Yeah. yeah. I I don't get it. The government don't care about us over here. Well, they just the farming. No, they don't really. No, I don't think. I think um, it's going a bit weird how it's gone yeah. really. Yep. What they want you to do is put solar panels all over your fields rather than farm, isn't it? Yeah, every, everything yeah. everything is going down. Solar panels, wind, wind turbines, turbines uh, battery storage. Re That's what we got approached for the other week. Right. Right. They want 10 acres of our farm for a battery storage unit. Really? They want interested in that. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're getting off the subject. I've, I've just... I, we we pretty well seen your yard and i haven't got much time to go around and do any other video with you but i just wanted to say gents thank you so much for inviting me down here more and than seeing welcome, you more than welcome. thank you you are a good bunch of guys and i hope long may you continue with hey team 
We, we, we will hey, try. team. <laughs> and, don't, and don't forget, it's jam first. No, it's not. You, you yeah, know, jam it's first. Two, two to one here. We are, we are the jam first, boys. He's jam and clotted cream. Clotted cream. It's clotted cream all day long. Hang on, is it a scone or a scone? It's a scone. See, that's where he's broken. What is it? It's scone. a scone. Oh, no, I'm back over this See? side now. Hey, hey, it's, it's, it's a scone. scone. It's a scone with jam first. Yeah, there you go. See? Not with jam first. Ah! No. We could talk about this till we go blue. I got the name right, but he's got the cream wrong. Yeah. He's got the name wrong, but he's got the jam wrong. I it's don't know. It's all gone wrong. Oh, it's really, all gone it? horribly wrong with hating. Anyway, we, 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 we basically, if he says something white, I'm going to say it's red. <laughs> Yeah, so pretty much, yeah, just to really paint just, cover off. Just yeah, just to aggravate each other. Isn't oh, it? Gents, I've had a, I've had a really wonderful afternoon. I, do you know what? I've actually been here about two hours chat, <laughs> chatting off camera. But it's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We just started rambling on, and we and we. I thought I'd better turn the camera on at some point. <laughs> we better do some video. But honestly, thank you so much for putting up with me. That's Welcome. Brilliant. Lovely to see you guys. All right, crack on. Have you got a saying? Uh, Mine's cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Just goes cheers. You know what you've got to say in your best Devon action? Hey team! Oh, go, on, go. go on, go on, Hey team! Yes! <laughs> there we go. I'm just back from Hey team. Bit sunnier here. Um, you can see behind me, there's our little cottage. It's lovely. Um, what a good bunch of lads they were. We, we had a real laugh there, honestly. Um, nice to see some other guys who are YouTubing because there aren't that many of us out there that um, sort of a reasonable level i suppose you'd say that um know each other we're we're kind of scattered around i've got i'm lucky i've got farmer p up the road from me but um you know i don't know that many youtube vloggers on farming that are around my area um so it's really lovely to see those guys i did run out of time i was running rushing at the end because i knew i had to get back because we were going out for a tea with the kids um so i didn't actually film uh their south devon uh cows but um Justin was on the case with his video and he actually filmed me as we were walking around. He did a bit of video. So if you go to the Hey Team TV's um, YouTube channel, you can see sort of what he called part two, which he filmed um, of me walking around where we just looked at the South Devons and uh, had a little bit of a chat. Right, right fun with those guys, real banter. Anyway, I'm going to get back inside. So